Hey, space fans, it's Tarek Malik, editor in chief of space.com, and the NASA budget request for 2026 is out from the Trump White House, and it's pretty awful. We caught up with Casey Dreyer, chief of space policy for the Planetary Society, to explain how bad it is, uh, how bad it could get, and what you can do about it. So tune in. Yeah, so so like like you like you said, Casey. Now we we brought you to talk about probably like one of the less fun. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, for sure. <laughs> at the moment, uh, things, and that that is just kind of what's going on at NASA. In fact, I saw that um, that you and the team at the Planetary Society uh, call this the the dark age of NASA science. If this uh, this budget request that has come from the uh, uh, the the White House gets realized, uh, and of course, a lot of this was released uh, in detail. We had a skinny budget before uh, late last week, so it's still extremely fresh. Um, and and it's really bad news. Cuts NASA's budget uh, to I think uh, the lowest since the '60s. Is that right, Casey? Do you want to kind of paint the, Yeah, paint the picture for for why we're in a a, a bit of a a danger zone for NASA science yeah. right now. Absolutely. So the budget that was proposed, uh, we knew the top lines uh, about a month ago, and what we got was the full what's called congressional justification. So the detailed, here's what we're going to do with this money. And as a, you know, you go through this and this is the full kind of mission by mission detail. So this is all the grisly details now of, of losing a quarter of your budget in one year, uh, which is what happens to NASA overall. Uh, and then with, of course, it's not applied evenly. It's, it's half of that uh, or the primarily uh, paid for by cutting science in half. Um, and so yeah, you cut science in half, a, a lot of bad things are going to happen. Um, so yes, the big picture thing. So this, we can look at a couple of big and smalls, right? So this is, will be, if this, we'll assume this goes through, or at least in terms of proposal, this will be NASA's smallest budget uh, adjusted for inflation since fiscal year 1961. Fiscal year 1961 began in July of 1960. So this would predate human space flight. space flight yeah oh my god yeah so this is a nasa that before you know shepherd's first flight into the day before the first before even gagarin's first flight um this would be the the in terms of big this is the biggest single year cut as a proportion of, of spending ever proposed by a white house and that includes the years after apollo in which they were ramping nasa's budget down. Mm. Uh, another, uh, the smallest, uh, this also fires a third of NASA's civil staff, service uh, staff, uh, which would leave NASA with the smallest workforce since fiscal year 1960, which began in 1959. So it's, uh, this is a, a NASA budget of uh, really, again, shrinking and, and kind of narrowing of capability through both just, you can just look at those top line numbers and putting it into historical context. Um, again, so let's so talk about science. Science is cut in half. Uh, NASA has five science divisions, uh, astrophysics, planetary science, heliophysics, right? Sun science, earth science, and then uh, microgravity and biological sciences. Basically pays for all the stuff they do on the space station, all the, all the experiments. The, the cuts are not applied evenly, but functionally, uh, they're all cut anywhere between 80% in terms of microgravity science oh to gosh. a mere 30%, which is planetary science. Uh, but astrophysics in particular loses about 60, two thirds of its budget in, in a single year, which is kind of astonishing when you think about how successful it's been, right? That's your Hubble, that's your uh, James Webb Space James Telescope, Webb. that's every, yeah, right? Um, it, it's astonishing. I mean, again, it's, it, and again, this would be NASA's smallest science budget since 1984. Uh, which was a very, very different time for NASA science as a much smaller program uh, or science didn't even exist as an independent uh, branch of science back then. So uh, this would cancel 19 missions that are currently active and in space and, and producing good science. It would cancel about uh, 18 uh, NASA led development projects for future space missions across all of those divisions. And it would cancel, you know, multiple, uh, all told about 41 active projects uh, in development or uh, in flight, which is roughly about a third of NASA's entire science project portfolio in a single year, right? Wow. And and then even you, you extend it out, you look at some of the future projections, there's a lot of other ones that get turned off next year or the year after that. So this is a, a, a calamity, right? It's hard to 
Well, you know, I was I was going to say, I mean, this so, I mean, I've, I've been playing catch up, Casey, since this budget came out. I, you know, I went on a family trip. I came back. This was here. I've been trying to understand it. But yeah. from what you described, it sounds like a catastrophic budget proposal for NASA. Yeah. 41. It, it okay, so project. excuse me for a second, but look at this. If you're watching the video stream, yeah. look at this chart we have. Anything red is bad, okay? So, and mm -hmm. I just want to point out, I mean, you kind of alluded to it, but, oh my gosh. you know, there are people that will look at this and say, well, it's a good thing we're saving money. There's a lot of sunk costs in these programs, whether they've flown or not, there's a lot mm -hmm. of money spent on them. And then you talk about something like Juno out of Jupiter, that's yeah. paid off. You know, all we're doing yeah. now is minding the store and keeping the thing going and, and bringing the, the results down. So it, it's a really a, a false economy on so many levels. And then you get into the conversation about killing SLS after Artemis three, assuming that actually lands in this decade. Yeah, it's four billion a launch, roughly estimated. That's a bad thing. Maybe Boeing can work on that a bit and the other contractors. But but we've spent how much on SLS and Orion to date? A lot. I think it's, it's <laughs> uh, edging up to eighteen billion dollars. Yeah, um, uh, more than that. I think it's, it's it depends maybe? on which and it, it depends How on you when you it, start yeah. counting. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Tens of billions, let's say. Uh, well, we yeah, start counting I, I, when constellations started. Honestly, that that's fair. Sure. So two thousand. So that gets you up. Yeah, exactly. Is it for some of those? And I, I have those numbers somewhere just off the top of my head. I I can't recall them, but certainly tens of billions. Yes, I mean, I think, and, and we can talk talk about the, the Artemis aspect and SLS and Orion. I'd say those are arguably the most defensible, at least you can defend it from a policy perspective, right? Just mm -hmm. putting aside you know, kind of the other stuff about it. You mean by um, saying the word China to the administration? Well, no, in the sense that it, they, they are very expensive and clearly NASA has options um, with uh, with launch that, you know, and you can maybe, can you reformulate certain aspects of, of Artemis that way? Probably. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's certainly very expensive. Yeah. Um, but uh, you do risk going into you breaking this cold, what I would call the consensus that, that is enabling Artemis to survive. And, and, you know, but let's put that aside just a second. So do you want to talk more? Anyway, just let's focus on the science aspects. Cause yeah, again, please. that's all happening in the context of exploration actually going up in this budget with this, <laughs> ambitious new Mars program uh, being added onto it, which again, right. in, in, without this context would be generally exciting, um, but has functionally no real clear um, implementation. But again, so science, let, let me just finish on the science thing. Please, please. Um, your point about operating missions, when a spacecraft launches, a sp and, and generally any spacecraft, but particularly a science spacecraft, on average, that spacecraft and its entire life of what it will cost the taxpayer, 90% of that expenditure has been made by the time that it launches, right? Building it is the difficult and expensive part. Operating it, that's when you get all your all your benefit from it, and that's the cheap part. So you're right, things like Juno, uh, New Horizons, which is out in the Kuiper Belt, missions like MAVEN at Mars, you're talking about at most 10 to $15 million per year, often quite a lot less. And so you're saving very, very little money. You are going to end a, an irreplaceable or a, a unique asset that if you want to replace it would cost you a lot more money to build and at the same time you're you know there's to me this deeper symbolic part of your something about us turning off these missions of exploration and letting those tumble into the blackness merely because we have asserted some tautological statement of well we can't afford these because we no longer are giving money to afford them mm -hmm. um it's something very sad about what we're it's a it, it, it hits me kind of a deeper level, right? That, that's a, that's not smart policy. It's not, and it's not smart budgeting. And in the context, it's you are also, I should say, in this, you're breaking a lot of joint projects with particularly European partners um, mm -hmm. and other international partners in this budget, right? So you're you're actually abandoning a number of efforts that we have made commitments to as a nation. The one that really gets me is the ExoMars Rosalind Franklin rover yes. from the European Space Agency which we had already broken a promise to the Europeans on 15 years ago. We pulled out of that one already in 2012. Mm -hmm. And that's what drove them to work with the Russians. They were getting ready to launch it. And then Russia invaded Ukraine. Europe pulled out of that agreement and was searching for how do we launch this thing. The U.S. came back and said, we will provide you a rocket, a Falcon 9, um, some landing, some system support, maybe help you build a lander. And this budget cancels that commitment again. Right. So it's like it's just something about this, like the second time pulling the rug out from under the Europeans on that project. 
add a Mars mission for nominally a Mars as being a goal is just, again, it's just a, it's, it's bad policy. It, it's a short-sighted decision and it undermines a lot of these goals. So you're talking about this a, is a, a human Mars mission, right? That plan uh, for, for their new human Mars initiatives. Yeah, yes. Yeah. They, they say that they want to do that while at the same time, they're saying like, we need, well, as a consequence, we need to build telecom relays and all these other infrastructure at Mars while they cancel Maven, which is a telecom relay spacecraft at Mars right now that you're getting pennies on the dollar right. to operate. So again, there's a lot of self-contradictory stuff in there, um, which, I think belies the fact that this budget was not not thought through um, at all. And for the most part, we know that this was the dollar amounts were set arbitrarily first. NASA was not part of the decision or, or in, their input was not requested when this came together. And NASA is now frantically trying to figure out what to do with these new initiatives that they're being told to do. But the money they do even request for this human initiative to Mars no studies have been done for that. They mm-hmm. no trade studies, economic studies, no industry input. You know, two months ago they were going to the moon, um, and so they they don't know if even the money they're asking for is enough to do anything. If there's a market to support these types of things, again, it, it's a profoundly bad strategy and policy. Even if you want to do these things they say they want to do, you would not do them like this if you want them to succeed. And and to your point about uh, human spaceflight to Mars, uh, among other problems, and we've talked about on the show before, we have things like uh, life support systems that are expected to last at least seven months before shutting off and killing you, and radiation mediation. I've seen no work out of SpaceX even approaching that, and and that's going to add a lot of weight to that spacecraft and refueling flights and so forth. I they, also they just cancel want- Mars sample return because it yeah. was too complex and over right. budget. And what was driving one of those cost increases in that project was that it was trying to, it had to land a lot of mass, the largest mass ever put on Mars. And so your entry, descent, and landing EDL stuff was all novel and new and couldn't be reused. This budget cancels MSR and then calls for hundreds of millions of dollars to be spent on a human rated EDL demonstration project in the next few years and says that humans will pick up rocks anyway. Right. Adding humans to spaceflight does not make things easier or cheaper. I'm sorry to say that is the reality of it. So again, it's that, that kind of internal contradictory system, but also maybe they could have been more clever, right? Can you, can Mars sample return and this human Mars initiative? It seems like those can actually fit together if you think about it a little bit. So it's, uh, again, a lot of this doesn't make sense and it's because it just, it was rushed and it was not led by a standard process. It's just the budgeting office saying you get this because, you know, and they had this budget, these the budget numbers, particularly for science were called out, Years ago, um, the current budget director of the White House, Russ Vogt, released his own alternative budget in 2022, where he said, we should cut NASA's science budget by 50%. Right. He's the budget director now. Lo and behold, what a coincidence, NASA's budget is cut by 50%. Of science, and, and this right? does feel like budget by women tantrum. Uh, we're going to go mm-hmm. to a quick break, and then we'll come back with Tarek's next question. Stand by, everybody. <laughs> 